So a remarkable uh, interview over the first five pages of The Sun today. I'm so ashamed, says Jermaine Genus. Sorry to my wife and the women I texted. It wasn't physical, but it was cheating. I'm self-destructive and let my family down. He says he's now in therapy. This is the TV presenter and former footballer Jermaine Genus last night speaking of his shame at sending inappropriate texts to uh, colleagues at The One Show. The sacked BBC presenter has apologised to his wife. He accepted that he had cheated on her but insisted nothing physical happened. He said he was sexing, essentially. He hasn't gone into the details of what's in these messages and, of course, we wouldn't at this time of the day anyway uh, with children listening and so on. But, I mean, really astonishing detail here. I just said I've been sacked from the BBC. My wife said, what for? And I said, for sending texts that weren't appropriate. He was on, on holiday at the time with his wife and he was sacked via a video call. Um, he was interviewed by The Sun and we can actually listen to a little bit of what he told Clemmy Moody. Clemmy is the assistant editor for Showbiz of The Sun. This is what Jermaine Genus said to her. Jermaine, the BBC has announced today that it has sacked you. Yeah. What's your reaction to that decision? Um, look, I uh, can't really talk about it. Um, I, as you can probably see, I am um, not happy about it. Um, but currently, as it stands, um, I'm, I'm going to have to let the lawyers deal with it. You know, there's two sides to every story, as we know. Um, so that's all I can say right now. It's being reported that you sent unsolicited texts to a female member of staff at the one show. Is that true? There's, like I said, um, I'm not happy about this situation. Um, you know, I'm going to be speaking to my lawyers about it, is all I can um, say right now. And Jermaine Genus did speak to his lawyers about that, and then he gave an interview to The Sun. We're hoping to bring you a clip of what he said to The Sun as well, um, perhaps a little bit later in this item. But he says he's ashamed. Uh, he said, I've let everybody down. Um, he denied being a sex pest, said he's done nothing illegal. But he was talking there to Talk Sport. That was a couple of days ago. He was actually presenting on the network. Now, Talk Sport have said that there are no plans to do anything more with him. Uh, Matthew, what do you make of this? I think in one way, certainly after recent weeks, the BBC maybe has to be commended in acting quite swiftly, it seems, from what we know. Um, I think he's appears to have been a bit of a creep and uh, it's been dealt with quite swiftly. I think he's made a mistake and maybe he should be allowed to move, to move on. I'm not a fan of kicking people when they're down, but the cynic in me will say he was on 200 grand a year at the BBC. He's now going to be missing that, and it's no surprise he's now given a tell-all story to the son who's probably paid him a pretty penny for it. Well, we um, don't know. I don't know if they've paid him anything for that. We need to check that. But um, they are a part of the same organisation. Just to be totally transparent, uh, the son is in this building. It's owned by the same company and so on. I don't know if they paid him for this or not, but certainly he's given this tell-all interview. And it is, it is fascinating to hear from him, certainly very contrite in what he's saying. I think now, I think mm. it was interesting the talk sport clip that's just been played because he was furious and mm. they hinted mm. at it. They said, mm. You're obviously very angry. He said, There's two sides to every story. Now, his conversation with his solicitors has clearly gone a different way for him to come out and be totally contrite now. And I just think there's a real lack within some people of emotional maturity, of almost entitlement, of, Oh, well, why, why am I, you know, reaping the reper uh, repercussions of, of what I've done, basically? Um, and I wonder whether we put people on a pedestal sometimes that are on the TV or, or celebrities yes, where yeah. they feel quite untouchable. It's like, why well, can't I just do this? I wonder what you think, Ben, of the BBC and how they have dealt with this. Very different from how... I mean, obviously, very separate, completely separate case in regard to Hugh Edwards, but similarly, there were allegations of inappropriate behaviour with uh, with colleagues. I'm not talking about the paedophilia. I'm talking about what he did when he was uh, in his role as a BBC person, and that's yeah. been, been dealt with very, very quickly. Yeah, so, I mean, I, it's in stark contrast to Hugh Edwards, and I would, I would not argue, I'm absolutely certain I'm right, that what Hugh Edwards did was much, much worse than mm. this. Um, you know, paedophilia, I think, is an absolutely heinous, horrible, disgusting crime, and he was kept on the payroll for a number of months, earned another £200,000 in total before they eventually got rid of Hugh Edwards. And every media contract, I imagine your contract, must have provisions in it Peter, which allows um, the radio station yeah, to... Yeah, if you're br bringing the organisation into, into disrepute. disrepute. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. so it should be immediately sacked. I don't understand why they hung on to Hugh Edwards. Um, but I all credit to The Sun to write five pages 
on the story, but not actually tell us what he did. <laughs> you know, we're all well, well, he, hasn't, he hasn't told them. In fairness, <laughs> no. I, heard, I heard the assistant editor of showbiz, Clemmy Moody, uh, saying you know there, there is some detail that he wasn't very happy to yeah. give, although he's given a heck of a lot of detail here. But we know that there were at least two colleagues uh, who worked at the one one show. There's actually some detail in regard to uh, the exchange numbers at a, at a boozy party. We're told, and then uh, sexting in, uh, happened over a 24 hour period as well um, so certainly you can read all about that in the in the sun um, and uh, I mean it's interesting his family is is uh, obviously reeling from this as well he says his wife needs some time to deal with it he's in therapy he's talking about anxiety as well yeah. so but it's so. funny how he went from combative my lawyers are going to yeah. deal with this to mm. I'm now in therapy it's yeah. almost like you're appealing to the public to please forgive me he's trying to sort of rehabilitate himself you know almost immediately having first thought well i can blag my way through this and now he's gone the other way i think he can be rehabilitated uh, matthew what's your thought on this depends what he's i mean if he's if he's got issue, issues with sex addiction or anything like that i'm not saying he has but if this is what he's trying to infer i hope i hope he can be if that's the case i think i think the thing that i'm always keen to stress is it's the kids I feel sorry for. Mm. He's got four children, I think one other from a, a previous relationship, and in the era of the internet and the social yeah, media, this is never going to go away. Yeah, I think they're at an age where I think he hinted in the interview that they're at primary school and they're going to get teased about this sort of stuff. Yeah. He's not now in the family bedroom. I believe his wife is standing by him, and I hope they can get through it purely for the kids more than anything else. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. OK, let's talk about something else now, um, and that is that uh, Britain is apparently a nation of secret shoplifters uh, using a banana trick, whatever that is, to uh, cheat the self-service tills. At least six million customers are guilty of using this trick. That you let them choose a cheaper item on the checkout screens than the one they actually take. People use fruit or vegetables as their bogus item. Uh, a survey shows 50% of people don't think the offence should, should be considered a criminal act. Um, this is 8% uh, 8, 8 of Britons taking items worth up to £10 without paying at all. And it revealed 13% of them pinched an item valued at up to £1. Now, in your heart of hearts, have you ever been at a self-service checkout and not paid full price? Ben, have I've been? always paid full price. It nev never occurred to me to put, in the, to, <laughs> to put in the wrong item. But, you know, there's a flip side to this. It's the flip side for a retailer is having checkout tills where you have to man them and check yes. you know what everyone's doing so what the retailer I'm not, I'm not in any way excusing this behavior which i think is wrong but um what the retailer needs to consider is the cost benefit of having people go through the old-fashioned till mm -hmm. system mm -hmm. versus the self-checkout and whether the leakage as they call this kind of thing uh, the cost of leakage is 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 worth tolerating to avoid having to employ lots of people doing it the old-fashioned way matthew yeah, no, I much prefer, as someone that's naturally quite lazy, I much prefer having somebody put my stuff through yeah, than me yeah, doing. No, I think also, this this has been around a long time, and I think people have now realised what it was. I remember 15 years ago working at one of the largest supermarkets in the country, and they gave us our self-service sort of training. And the one thing that confused me, they said, oh, yeah, people do sometimes shoplift. They can put a banana or an apple or whatever through, and actually they'll ask you for a bottle of vodka and they'll just sort of pretend right, they've scanned that. Right. And I thought, why do you get some scales that work then? Yes, <laughs> you know, that, that say, oh, no, this doesn't feel yes, like an apple. Yes. So, no, it, it doesn't come as any surprise. Um, but, again, it, this is what's going to happen if you don't employ people and, and yeah, rely on yeah. robots. I but I, I think the more serious issue is not this one but the absolute willful shoplifting that is now becoming endemic in the oh, country. Yeah, yeah. People just going in, picking up stuff, putting in a bag, walking out, not being challenged, the police not interested. It's almost the crim... You know, they call it petty crime, which mm. I think is a terrible way to describe any form of crime, because when you categorise something as petty crime, you're effectively legitimising it through the back door, saying, well, it's only petty, it's not mm. worth dealing with. And what you're doing there is encouraging criminality. And people who weren't perhaps criminals before think, oh, well, I can get, get, I can get away with that. And that might encourage them to do other things. Yeah. They even class the theft of a car nowadays as petty crime because they think, <laughs> you know, they think... Ridiculous. That, yeah, it's ridiculous. They okay. think there's, it, 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 it's victimless because you get your insurance money, but you don't. You never get the value of the car. Mm. And, of course, your insurance premiums go up. It's very... It, it, it's damaging. Okay. And, um, you know, we need to put a lid on crim criminality. I want to bring you the clip now. I just want to go slightly back to the Jermaine uh, genus 
uh, story because I wonder if this change of tone from him actually is in some way strategic. As his first interview revealed, we heard that a little bit earlier on of what he told Talk Sport on Thursday. He feels hard done by, but if he wants to save his career, of course, he needs to show contrition take responsibility. There's no suggestion, obviously, he did anything criminal or touched anyone or did anything that he shouldn't have done in a criminal sense. But should he still have his career? I'll ask uh, Matthew and uh, and uh, Ben that just in a second. But I just want to uh, hear a clip now from what uh, Jermaine Janice told Clemmy Moody, the assistant editor of The Sun, when she interviewed him yesterday. Firstly, to say sorry um, to my wife, to my you know, to my family, um, to the women involved as well and what I've um, put, the, put them through. Um, but also these kind of like, um, you know, rumours that just kind of start. I think it's really important that I kind of um, put my point across that there is nothing illegal that has happened here. Um, this is consenting adults that messaged each other. Now, this is completely on me. Um, I am 100% in the wrong and I accept full responsibility for that. And it's something that obviously I need to address and look at myself. The family situation is the thing that's the first, is, is at the forefront of my mind that I'm trying to just piece back together. But I've also got to be able to kind of look myself in the mirror and understand where I've gone wrong mm -hmm. and understand that this is on me. It's not on anybody else. There's nobody else to blame here. Jermaine Janus there is speaking to Clemmie Moody, who is the assistant editor for Showbiz of The Sun. I mean, he's a football expert, not a moral authority, some people might argue. But just briefly, Ben, I wonder what your reaction is to Well, I, I don't know how he squares his comment that this is entirely his fault, yet the sexting was apparently between two consenting adults. If it's two consenting adults, then no one's at fault. It's one or the other. You can't have, you know, you can't occupy both spaces at the same time. Um... But I, I don't know what he's done. I actually, none of us actually know precisely what it is that he's done and who the recipient was and what sort of encouragement he thinks he got in order to send these texts and how they responded. So, you know, we're kind of judging something we know very little about. Matthew, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's tricky with not knowing, but you wonder whether his initial anger in, in the original, the, the earlier TalkSport clip was... If this was, I think it said, 24 hours of, of basically sexting, you have to wonder whether there was... There was obviously a bit of back and forth. It wasn't... Was it him being suggestive and they didn't like it? Or, or was or it a we, drunken well, mistake? Well, we don't know. Maybe it was, maybe it. It was just him sending a lot of messages. That and maybe true. there was no response or a muted response or a response that wasn't the same as what he was sending. And you're right, there is a lot we just don't know here. Yeah, and I think this is the problem when some people mix, uh, you know, business and drink and other sorts of things with work. And I think... Um, you know, I hope he gets the help he needs if that's if that's going to be the best way forward. And as I said to you in the break, football has no morals. I have no doubt he will find a home somewhere to go and broadcast from. 